Uh, well, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the uh, Circuit Inclusion Network event on uh, we're calling Generations, Bridging Generations, Changing the World. And we have um, basically three goals today. Um, one is to um, have all of us get a sense as to what it means to be um, of a generation. I'm an old diversity person. I used to do a lot of diversity training. And um, um, often people would identify with their groups. You know, it's the part of the whole diversity thing is like, what is your, what is your group? What does that mean? But rarely would we identify, we would talk about our generation and how that influences us. Um, you know, so we're going to do that. And the other thing, um, we're going to talk about what it means to um, be able to communicate uh, and work productively with people that are from different generations um, than ourselves. And the third piece, which is perhaps the most important, is how can we do the second piece better? You know, uh, I'll use the word in a spiritual context. You know, so I'm going to be giving us a thought exercise um, at the at the end of this. Um, asking us to imagine that we're all in a community together and it's sort of like, how can we support each other across generations? Um, I would like to introduce my um, co-facilitators. It's like half of the room, right? <laughs> uh, uh, um, fr from the top left on my screen is um, um, uh, Tom Daly, um, who is a sort of a pioneer in men's work. He's, uh, he's a, the uh, originator of the four gateways um, coaching method and um, has been uh, sort of a, a pioneer in men's work for many years. Um, Chloe Barrett Page, who has um, lots of different um, things that she's done. She's also, she's a doula. She's taken um, Tom um, Tom's four gateways thing and his third third piece I myth, Chloe. Um, remind me, what that what is that third thing? Neuro Naropa. 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 Yes, right. She's it's... in a graduate program of Naropa, and she's acting like it's not a big deal. But she's like one of these people, you know, like I'm twice her age. I look at this, the things that this woman has done. I think, you know, what have I done with all my life, you know? <laughs> and uh, last is uh, Ian, who seems to have disappeared for a moment, um, who's in Ecuador um, studying um, regenerative ag agriculture, which probably doesn't really quite contain it. He's also the assistant director of the social, uh, the Sacred Inclusion Network. And just a quick word about us, and um, then we'll get started. Um, our thing, for those of you that are, are not with us, we have two um, sort of missions. One is to create um, community uh, for those of us that are, um, I'll call it ourselves spiritual misfits, um, or maybe unaffiliated spiritual people, uh, um, to give our, ourselves a sense of community. And the second piece is to give, give that group um, tools to help um, change and influence the world. So that's what we're doing. So um, I want to briefly um, um, share my screen um, to um, show you um, just some sort of suggestive um, yeah, spiritual misfit toys, right, Ken? Um, um, just to give you some thoughts about um, the generation piece. But before we, we do that, I, I wanted to do like a, a, a it, um, I don't know if we're going to do. Let's do. Why don't you? Why don't you give us some little, 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 little bit of qigong, Tom, first, and then okay. uh, tomorrow we'll give us an attunement, and then okay. we'll get started. Okay. So, yeah, let's just start with some breath. You know, that's where we are. That's the inspiration for life, literally. So, yes, a couple of nice big deep breaths. Really um, open up your chest cavity. Stretch a little bit. <sighs> Oh, yeah, both directions. Oh. oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, and just do some nice slow rotations. If you're if you're standing up, it's it's going to be easier. But you can also do this sitting down. Just kind of rotate your spine, and if you're standing up, maybe just tap on the your kidneys. Tap on the back, kind of wake up your lower back. Ah, uh, yeah. <clears throat> and just, I'm gonna back up a little bit. Just imagine that you're kind of gathering up the energy of the day with a nice big deep breath, just opening up big, wide, 
And as you exhale, kind of collapse down forward. And then open up again. You imagine you're opening your heart to the world, opening to this new day, and exhaling and letting it go, just letting go of any old stuff you're carrying. And ah, release, open. Ah and release. And we're gonna imagine now that we're just, we're reaching down into the center of the earth and we're bringing earth energy up through our body, is feeling the blessing of having this body, the gifts of the earth, and just offering that out to the world with an exhale and reaching down, getting more of that earth energy, bringing that up appreciating every cell in your body that comes from this earth and offering it out. And we'll do a couple of more, bringing it up. Ah, nice big exhale. Ah. Good, and then just bring that energy right into your center. He's concentrating it right here in your center place. And then we'll go and we'll ask, reach up and get light spirit energy from above. And we'll bring that down through our bodies, all the way through our bodies and down into the earth. Inhale, bringing it in. And exhale it down through your body. Inhale your arms up, gathering up that light spirit energy, bringing it down through your body. Let's do one more of those. Big breath. And this time, just bring it right down to your center. And again, just concentrating it right there in your center place. Yeah, now just imagine that you're like a bamboo in the wind and you're just allowing the cosmic breeze to kind of gently move you in a little bit of a circle. And as you do that, just appreciating your body, appreciating nature, Appreciating your big heart, appreciating your big mind, appreciating this gift of human consciousness, appreciating that sovereignty that lives in you, the part of you that is the, the being. And with a breath, just coming back, nice soft eyes, relaxed breath, and we'll we'll do a little attunement with Tamar. Thank you, Tom. That was lovely. Everybody can get comfortable in your seat. Feeling into your feet on the ground. Spine long, relaxed, chin slightly in. Bring your awareness to your breath. I want you to imagine a beautiful beach. You're walking along the beach. 
Waves are crashing. You can hear seagulls in the distance. You can taste and smell the salt in the air. You're the only person on this secluded beach. Strolling around with ease and with purpose. You came here to meet up with a mentor of yours. As you're making your way towards a big beach umbrella far in the distance, you can feel the warmth of the sand against your feet. Keep walking towards the beach umbrella. Getting closer and closer. As you get closer, you start to get excited about your meeting. You approach the umbrella and you see that the person waiting for you is sleeping. Gently touch their hand and wake them up. They wake up absolutely delighted to see you there. They get up and give you a big, giant, sandy, warm hug. In the embrace, your breath and their breath start to sink in and out. Please feel free to take this opportunity and tell them something. Thank them at this moment. Allow them to honor you. Receive their message. Embrace once more before saying goodbye. Taking a few long, nice breaths together. When you feel ready, you can blink your eyes open gently and meet us here in the room. Thank you. Thank you, Tamar. Um, generations, I wanted to do a quick poll. Um, raise your hand or use the, um, you know, what is it, the reaction thing. If you were born anywhere between 1900 and 1964, okay, so everybody else probably was born after that. So we're going to have two groups. Hi, Jude. <laughs> All right, so I'm going <laughs> to, yeah, we didn't see you before, Jude, that was all. I'm going to just um, give you like a very brief um, little thing. It's a PowerPoint that I cribbed from somewhere that um, at least lets us focus a little bit on the generations we're a part of and maybe the influences that are, um, you know, that we have, um, yeah, that we're part of. So I'm going to share my screen. All right, so um, you can, um, people can quibble with um, some of mm -hmm. these things, but um, I think this at least gives us an idea. Um, those of us that were born between 1900 and 1964, oh, 
or either boomers or the so-called greatest generation. Most of us here are either on the cusp of the so-called greatest generation and boomers. And for us, um, these are some of the things that <clears throat> really stood out. Uh, for me in particular, it's like the Vietnamese War, the civil rights movement, and all that, um, wow, all that um, um, just, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, somebody from the birds re recently died. I uh, can't remember that guy's name. Ken knows who he is. David uh, Crosby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I'm thinking about that tune, um, Ohio, and how yeah. every time I hear it, um, you know, I still I still get chills because uh, it just brings it all back to me, you know, a lot of the magic of that time. In any event, those days are done. And those of you who are either um, Generation X or millennials, you have different uh, influences that maybe have informed you during your formative years. Um, it was interesting, I saw that, um, 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 well, one with the so-called influencers, it's, it, they came of age when the USA was using its status as the most powerful and prosperous nation of the world, which is something we're all, we're all feeling in this globalized time. Um, so you can just look at these. I, I won't really go over them, um, but I think these are these are useful, and this will be useful to think about um, as we do our work, um, you know, later. And there's an, another chart which talks about the 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 core values of these particular groups, which I find interesting. Um, so a lot of us um, boomers, we 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 sort of like came came up with a anti-war feeling, and we did think anything is possible. You know, I remember being part of these demonstrations that we would go to Washington in those days, and we thought that the whole world was watching and we were going to change everything and all that sort of stuff. You know, um, another generation comes and different different things different different um, things um, uh, you know come about. Um, global, more much more of a global generation. Techno literacy, techno -liter literacy is a big thing, which certainly didn't exist when I was a kid. Um, there's a lot of things that we can put with this. So um, what I'd like you to do, if you have, um, if you can get something to write with, um, just this, this will help things um, a little bit. Um, and I'm just going to ask you certain simple questions and I'll keep this up if necessary, but it's not really necessary. So I guess what I want you to do is to think about um, the formative years. And for, for most of us, that means the time that we were in college or just getting into adulthood. And just think about some of the kind of things externally that were happening that had an impulse, influence on you and your generation. You can look at this if, if you want, to, if this, this helps you think about it. Just make a few notes. And we're gonna, you're gonna talk about them a little bit in smaller groups in a moment. And then something that you might not think about often, but um, if, if you think that, yes, I'm a member of this group, um, what does that mean? You know, what, what, are, what are some of the things that you think characterizes the generation that you're a part of that to some extent makes you distinct from subsequent generations or generations before you? And the final question I'm going to ask you to consider is when you think of your generation and how others perceive you, um, how does your perception of yourself and your generation differ from, in other words, how are you perceived differently? How do people you think stereotype your generation?
All right, I'm about to put you in um, two um, breakout rooms. I, I, I suppose I should let you choose which group to be in, but I'll, I'll do it, I guess. I think I know who's here. If I make a mistake, tell me, send me a text. All right, so um, those are our three questions. Um, basically, um, what, what, what were the what were the sort of outer influences that were happening in for your generation? Um, what are the, the, the core characteristics of your generation? And how do you think people may, maybe misperceive you? So I, I'd like, you know, just maybe sort of five minutes of um, just the things that stood out for you listening to, um, you know, people in your generation say things. So what were the, some of the main sort of highlights in terms of influences? Hey, I think I have a much more positive view of uh, our generation growing up than everybody else. I, there was a lot of peace and love in there, believe it or not, but everybody was complaining about being technical and finding out that's wrong. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, we are where we are is the main thing. Music matters and it definitely matters to me. I, I, uh, I just think we need to be a little more, we need to be proud of where we come from because I think it leaves us open to change because if nothing else, we experienced a whole lot of change growing up. And and it's not five minutes, but I'm done. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else want to chime in from our group? Yeah, quickly. I think yeah, that, uh, thank you. There's a dualism to our generation that, we started off with this sort of hippie social change, love, peace, revolution, and we ended up, you know, as uh, mature adults, just, you know, having a totally destructive, uh, regressive uh, political influence. So there's some kind of, I, I can't fully articulate it, and I don't want to take too much time, but there's something dyadic and conflicting about our values uh, as they seem to emerge and what ultimately manifested. I'll leave it at that. Great. Well, let me say one thing about that, Steve. Uh, the, the first value seemed to be that we we were unconventional and we wanted to simplify life and, and make it real. And then we seemed to end up, as Tom was saying, with all the technology and you know, with the spending all the money on making everything look good and, and we're into status and we're into uh, consumption and all of these things. So it seems like it turned into its opposite. And that's, I guess, strange. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, I mean, I'm a proud I'm boomer. I thought it was great. <laughs> one more thing, though. I think that just leaves us the opportunity to learn from our mistakes. So I, I, I <laughs> I, I agree we screwed up, but we can still learn. <laughs> That's good. All right. So, uh, you know, those, those of y'all that inher inherited our mess, uh, what did, what, <laughs> did y'all talk about? Influences, um, how other people see your generation, anything. Um, I'll hop in if y'all don't mind. I think um, a lot of where we started with with our influences were, you know, the change and the advances in technology because that sped up how we got information and what information we were acquiring that we may not have been privy to before. Um, we also talked about like where, you know, where the economy was, things like that, that kind of had an effect on, okay, now we're not buying houses, we're renters, we're not in jobs for 30 years, we're hopping around, there were some things there. And then um, the last piece I'll add is um, how, you know, hip hop affected the generation. Um, you all made the point that, um, you know, your generation, it was, you know, the hippie movement and whatnot, and how that kind of carried around before us, it was hip hop and it affected how we dress, talk, interact with each other and now it's kind of a worldwide thing. So um, those were some of the differences that we saw how we were affected by it. Um, and that had kind of big influences on our lives. Okay. 
Chloe, T, Daniel, anyone else want to hop in? I surely what can. Yeah. Yeah, I'll add I'll add two other things to what Joe said. Uh, in those formative years, there was there was like climate crisis, Al Gore's inconvenient truth. Uh, that was a big one. Um, and then Obama. So, I mean, just those, you know, kind of the hope and the, um, you know, just kind of that climate crisis going into the mainstream and that affecting kind of the trajectory of jobs and all of that in the, you know, early 2000 teens, um, you know, when a lot of us were in, in college. And I, I add that it's so interesting to hear uh, that the other generation talk about kind of what those influences were too. It's really interesting to hear. I've, I haven't been a part of a conversation like this, so really appreciative. Maybe my instructions weren't that clear, but um, no one talked about um, how other people see your generation and how maybe you're seen differently than how you are. Any Any thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I could definitely talk about that. I think um, one big thing we talked about in that regard is like kind of like the ADD, TikTok, always on the phone, kind of not like really have not being there with each other. Like, you know, so many conversations are over here and it's not really horrible, but it has affected us for sure. Also, the global aspect. Um, I mentioned, you know, a, a good friend of mine, their like best friend lives in Cuba. And they talk almost every day. And that was impossible 60 years ago. You have to send a letter and maybe you'd get it every what, four, five, I don't know, y'all know more about letters than me, but <laughs> that's a big, <laughs> that's definitely a big change. Um, also like, you know, can't really hold a job or don't stay with one thing, jumping from thing to thing and kind of more fairy in the air, which also goes to like, kind of more like sensitive or emotional kind of I feel like the back in the day it was like you know you got to tough it through if there's a problem you shut up about it you just tough it out where um nowadays it's more open it's like you know talk about it or go get a therapist or what's feeling inside mm -hmm. and I think that's kind of what it seems that other generations are kind of looking at us like that um I also want to real quick talk about how it seems like uh the older generation is um talking about how it started with like peace and love and these things. And then the switch went from maybe not, not as much of that. And I think the word that came up for me was like survival. I'm kind of seeing that happen with my generation as well. It's like, there's this idealism of like, Oh, we want to do this. We want to do this, but it's like, you can't pay your bills protesting or like, you know, or writing letters mm -hmm. to Congress and someday you got to figure out how to eat and feed your family. And I think, you know, it's hard to, to try to, to change the world when you can barely survive. And I, I think that's a big part of it. It's not just like everyone was like, oh, we got to change the world. And it's like, actually, no, fuck it. We don't want to change the world. I think it's like a lot of people had to survive their own circumstances, which led them away from that. And like I said, I see that happening in my generation. Um, so yeah, T or Chloe, you guys want to add anything? I feel like you hit, like you all hit a lot of it, all really that we talked about. The only last piece I'd drop in that Ian, you brought in was this piece around non-binary and trans identities. And I feel like that's a place where in conversations with boomers, there can be a lot of confusion about those identities. And I see the millennials really being passionate about bringing those identities into conversations. Okay, we got um, one other um, piece I'm going to um, uh, ask you to think about um, briefly, and I'm going to put you back in the same groups, and hopefully I don't mess this up this time. Um, you know, um, we're the Sacred Inclusion Network, so a lot of it is like belief systems and spirituality, you know, and um, I think we probably all grew up with different influences in that regard, you know, um, and I can speak briefly about myself. My parents... Um, they wanted me to go to Catholic school, right? So that was a big thing, although I didn't take it all that seriously eventually. But um, so anyway, I, I'd like you to um, reflect back on um, sort of um, influences you had in terms of 
beliefs and how that's evolved over time. You know, maybe you started out one way and then you moved into another way. And maybe the, the conversation that your parents were giving you about these kind of things um, and how that evolved. So um, we're going to do the same thing. And then I, I promise you in the third time, we're going to, it's just going to be all of us, us together. But I want you to think about really, really your beliefs and how they evolved in terms of your, your uh, maybe religious practices, spiritual practices. Um, yeah, like that, you know. Um, so maybe think about that for a moment individually. Um, it takes about maybe 60 seconds for you to put back into rooms. And I'm going to be very intentional and make sure I get everybody in the right rooms this time. So um, think about that. And, uh, you know, I'll put you back into breakout rooms. So the questions are, um, what has been your arc for finding meaning? How has it evolved? And how has your arc been similar to others in your generation? And how do you think it's might have maybe been different? Um, so I'm real anxious um, to get to the, you know, the, 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 the perhaps the most meaningful um, part as to how we can work together better across generations. But before we do that, and I have a way for doing that, but I just like to get just a couple of just quick pop up thoughts, maybe from the millennial group and also from the from the older group as to maybe what stood out for you and your conversations. But very quickly. Uh, well, what stood out for me is that each person in our group has a very unique, like individual journey to get to like our spirituality. But the, but at the end of the day, we kind of are all seeking a, a kind of like a similar thing. We all want like a spiritual community or to be able to to explore what spirituality and what the world means to ourselves in these communities and like. But Chloe talked about how she found like this amazing dance group, this like global dance group that she kind of wishes she had when she was younger. And that also sounds amazing, by the way. I don't know if I said that, but that's my that, that's my kind of that's kind of my gist is we're all on the same journey. It feels very individualized. We're trying to like kind of see how we can connect in a healthy way that is meaningful to us. Yep. Patty, go ahead. Are younger generation people uh, afraid of us, afraid to talk to us? I know I'm not afraid to talk to anybody, but, you know, are they afraid of me? <laughs> anybody? Because, I, I mean, I can answer that, but if anyone else wants to. I would say... Um... I would say maybe not afraid, but apprehensive. I think a lot of our experiences, we feel like we aren't heard or really listened to. Like, you know, it's if we come with something that's combated with either a solution or something else where it's like, oh, you're not really feeling what I'm saying and feeling what I'm coming from. You're just kind of hearing at a surface level. I think that's why there's some um, apprehension to kind of share with different generations. That was a big one. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to say that was a big thing for me. My daughter had to teach me how to just hear and not find a solution. Okay, a little thought exercise um, moving forward is um, I want you to imagine, well, first of all, I want you to think about a meaningful across uh, generational relationship you've had, whether it's older person or younger person. And just um, take a moment to think about that. Like the most meaningful ones maybe you've had. And the next thing about that is that what, what made that work? What, the, what made that particular relationship work? What, 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 what enabled it to, to thrive? And the third part is um, I want you to imagine that right now we're in a spiritual community and we all we're 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 we know that the planet depends on us to get this right. We got people of different generations here and we really need to do something to make make sure that we're using ourselves to our best the best of our abilities. What might we do to make that happen? 
just reflect on that for a moment. And I'm sure that some answers will come out when we start sharing in the larger group, but, but just allow that thought or that inquiry to settle for a moment. And now we're going to do this more or less sequentially. And I'm going to ask you to, um, you know, um, talk about a, a very meaningful cross-generational um, relationship you've had. And I'll start because I've got one in my head. And I want you to give you some, also some more time to think about it if you haven't come up with something. I'm thinking about my aunt Albertine that we call Teeny that I grew up with that lived in our house when uh, when I was younger. And um, it's one of these odd relationships that, you know, I felt closer to her than I did my mother or any other people in my house. And she was very different from me in that she was a Jehovah's Witness. And I never really, that was not my thing. Uh, but but she, she kind of loved, loved me unconditionally, you know, and even um, though it was quite clear, I'm sure to her that um, I wasn't going to get involved in that whole, her whole thing. Uh, you know, she just loved me. And she, she really taught me what unconditional love looked like. Uh, I, I'm nowhere near it now, but I remember her, um, you know, taking care of an older relative um, living with her when, when I was very, very much younger. And um, I remember how it was important, how important it was for me to go and see her before she passed. And I did, you know, and, um, and that relationship meant a lot to me and still does, even though she's been gone for a number of years. Anyone else can come come in and. Um... I have a comment, an answer and a question for the. Uh, for the younger generational folks, but quickly, before, before you get into that, get into your own story and what we're going to get into, you know, those kind of things in a minute. You want me to hold the question for later then? Yeah, I do. All right. I'm holding it. Well, quickly, I was close to both of my grandparents on my mother's side. Um, but the first one that came to my mind was my grandfather who died when I was 20. So I didn't know him as an adult as when I was an adult, but I did get a lot of, you know, input. He was born in 1901 and he didn't talk a lot about his childhood, but I got a lot of input about what his, you know, what, what that generation as pre, you know, whatever you call that generation, uh, turn of the century, really, uh, what his generation was all about, which was achievement and living a, a straight and narrow life with integrity and and, and com community service, but also a lot of ego. So it was even though he taught me a lot of good things, he he was egotistical and believed that he was the greatest, you know, thing that ever happened to anybody else who ever happened to know him. And so we we, all, we sort of had to love and worship him at this. He loved me, but it came with the price that I had to worship him, uh, which is complicated. Um, but I, from both my grandparents, I got a real infusion of what it was like to be in, what who the people were, I should say, of that generation that's now, for the younger people, that would, that would be you know, like three generations. You know, for the people, young adults now, would be more like three plus generations back. So that was certainly meaningful. I'll hold my question to later as per your directions, Angela. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm going to go. Ready? Mine goes the other way. Um, my intergenerational relationships, the friends of my children who are all in their 30s, all of them have at least one friend and one of them has three friends that still come to see me and visit me. And um it's very meaningful to me because they trust me to hear what they have to say. And, and that's very meaningful to me. Of course, I notice all the old people are talking. Well, I'll hop in real quick and say, for me, it's the people of this group, Sacred Inclusion Network. Um, growing up, I feel like I had pretty much no mentorship. And um, I didn't even realize it until the other day, Angelo asked a question to who was a mentor in your life. And I was like thinking, I was thinking, and I was like, yeah, it's the people of sacred inclusion. It's Angelo, Bill, Ken, Patty. Um, this is like my first real chance to 
kind of interact consistently with people of uh, the different generation. And um, it's proved really valuable. I think the biggest thing for me is like, just go do what you want to do. Like, just go do it. If you want to write, go write. For me, I've had trouble like with the big lofty goals, like the hard stuff. I'm good at like doing like enough of all the things I need to do. But I think my like the sacred inclusion network and the people just having these conversations is like, man, if you want something, no matter how hard it is, like plan it out and go for it, do it. Um, so yeah, that's been my biggest intergenerational experience. The people right here. Joe Jeff, I see the hands up. What's up? Uh, so in terms of the mentorship, um, I had I had a few mentors growing up in the church, um, and it was specifically um, kind of the youth mentor because before that point, it was more so everything was coming from the pulpit from a teaching point of view. Uh, but when we got with this youth mentor, um, not only was it teaching it, it was he was doing things with us outside of the church. We go out to eat, we play basketball, and it felt like he was meeting us where we were. Um, so in return, some of the things that he was saying, um, if it connected more because you see somebody that's, you know, that cares about what you're going through outside of your spirituality, right? We're all in church on Sunday for the same reason. But outside of that, sometimes it feels like, you know, from Saturday to Monday, as long as I'm praying or whatever, there's not really much concern. Um, so I'll say that's that's one that had a big impact. Uh, and I do want to answer Angelo's last question in terms of, you know, moving forward, what we can do together as the generations. I believe that there is no you and us and that we all have things that can help, you know, our current generation, the next or even the previous. Um, and it's going to take, you know, some humility for us to be able to bring all of our different perspectives, talents, and skills to the tables without, you know, bringing it to the table to give to somebody else and to not need, you know, like uh, Kim was saying, not need any praise for doing it, not need anything right in return. It's just to bring in and say, okay, this is what I can offer. Let's see what we can do with that and allow others in the group to do the same. Beautifully put, Joe. That was wonderful. Hey, Lisa, I saw your hand. Hi, everybody again. Um, I totally forgot the question, but I'll just talk anyway. Um, I had, when we did that exercise on the beach, I had no mentor that I could come up with. I think a couple people mentioned this before about our generation uh, raising ourselves. I felt my mother was just, I was a single parent. Um, my mother was a single parent and sort of, we just had to figure it out on our own, how to raise ourselves. So that was hard. Um, as far as, Younger people, I love being around my daughter's friends and my son's friends and just being there for them and listening to them or just, I just love their energy. And I'm at the place in my life where I'm not going to make a change except through being who I am and love people and bringing positivity to the world. And I'm really praying that the younger people will step up because there's so much work to do. Did I answer all the questions? Did I, um, was I on the right? That was wonderful. Yeah, you did a great job. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thanks, Ian. <laughs> Uh, I have no idea where Tom and um, and Jude went, um, but um, so but anyway, it gets to our last um, maybe most significant question. Ken, I know you had a, a question to ask to the younger generation. Um, so um, and then I'm going to do the spaceship Earth thing, you know. So we're all in a spiritual community, and we need to do this better. And that's the question. But anyway, Ken first. Um, I uh, quickly, and then you could answer me later. But I have a niece and nephew who are 
respectively 34 and 38, and they're both having young children now. But whenever I talk to them about my family history, which is our family history, their eyes glaze over and they just like, oh yeah, whatever, Uncle Ken, I don't really, you know, implication, I don't really give a shit about your grandparents, even though they're their great grandparents. And I'm, the question is, why can't I impart to, the, you know, I, I'm not going to live forever and I have a better sense. My sister is still alive, but she's not a family historian. I'm the one who knows a lot more than my sister does. So why can't I get, you know, I, I realize if they're not interested, they're not interested, but why aren't they interested in getting the information from me before I'm gone, and then they won't, the, the source won't be available. Just write it down, and when they're ready, it will be there. <laughs> interview yourself. <laughs> write, write a book. Oh, we could do an interview. I'd love that. Let me, let me stop. I, um, I implore you, Ken, please. Yes, what Lisa said, write it down, because they will one day want to know. I, I would also ask. Go ahead, Daniel. Sorry. Go ahead, Daniel. Oh no, you're good. I would also also ask like when you became interested in it, and like I'm I'm personally interested in that for my own family, and I think that's yeah, it's individual. But I'd be curious on when you became really fascinated with that. Yeah, quickly. I was I was probably a little older than them, but I you know I let my my father die when I was forty, and I wish I had forced, and he was reticent in every respect. But if I had to do it over again, I would have sat him down and said, tell me about your mother who unfortunately died before I was born. Tell me about your grandparents. You know, I would have forced it at, in retrospect, I, I would have pumped them all for more information while they're alive. And now it's, they're all gone. But it was probably a little older than, to answer your question, Daniel, it was probably more like when I was in my 40s and 50s. So they may be a little young for it yet. But anyway, thank you. Thank you for the re bring that up, Daniel. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it can. And um, unfortunately, I'm in the same boat where I was not interested until my father passed away. And once my father passed away, I got super interested in both sides. So take that as as it is. So I'm, I'm keeping you all over time, but, um, you know, so, but, but I did want to get to the, the last question, well, which is, um, you know, it's like just imagining we're in this we're in the, we're in this thing together. And uh, we know that uh, there's all this stuff happening on the planet right now, you know, um, and it's important for us to get this right. Um, you know, and, and I'm, I guess the question I have is what can we do to make this better for ourselves across generations? I'm going to uh, jump in and real quick. Oh, sorry. I'm going to jump in real quick and say, if anyone feels like they have to leave, go, you know, if you got something to do, but I think this is an amazing conversation and I'm willing to go as long as we need to go. And I also saw Joe Jeff had his hand up. I'd like to hear about what he has to say. Other than that, Bill, what you got for us? Uh, just, um, you know, saying that, yeah, we're all in this boat together. Uh, and yet at the same time, because we're different, we have a lot to contribute to each other to, toward the solution because we have a lot of different perspectives. So in a way, I'm saying that you know, look at these differences as enriching rather than threatening, rather than being right or wrong. Let's see what we can all do together to come up with a solution that will help all of us because we are in the same boat. So can we be conscious of this fact that we truly are in the same boat, you know? Um, so I was going to hop in. And I think I could kind of answer Ken's question and Angelo's at the same time. I think one thing is um, making things tangible in terms of Ken's point of view, um, being able to connect the generation to the past is making it tangible. So whether they may have similarities to some of your ancestors, they may have similar personal traits. If you connected that way, they could kind of see the connection more than somebody they, they may have never met, may have never known about. Um, and yeah, the same, you know, to Angelo's questions, I think the way we make it better is talk about tangible things that we can do that can help and affect this. Um, to Bill's point, it's enriching that we can get, you know, it's you all, and I don't mean, I don't like saying you all, but the older generation, you all are libraries for experience and what has come before you that we don't, necessarily have access to all the time. So um, when you when you come to us with things that can relate to us that you also have years of experience with, I think it, it makes it more tangible and realistic and able to kind of 
um, we're able to pick out what's good from that and apply it to ourselves. Yeah, I guess I'm going to start by answering my own question. I, I think you know sometimes um, somewhere I heard the idea that um, um, you know everybody that's younger than you is like your your your, your children. Everybody that's older and than you is your your father and mother. Everybody the same age is, or your cousins. You know, having that kind of universal um, viewpoint can make us conscious. Okay, this is a younger person. You know, what what, what what's what 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 can be my role here? Yes, we're all equal at the same time, but there is this thing about, um, you know, eldership and mentorship, and also about being um, what's on the other end, a mentee, and um, you know, learning from older people um, that that we can just be more conscious of. Patty, your hand is raised. Okay, I just want to say I'm a closet cheerleader. And so I'm real good at hearing something and supporting that idea. And um, what I can offer is hope. And I offer that to the whole world. I will hope until I die. So. Yeah, go ahead. You ready? Go ahead. Um, I'm sorry, I think we had a power outage and I wasn't able to get back on with these. Um, um, I just, I realized something yesterday or in this last week, I've had the good fortune of um, being in two roles, one as a therapist and the other as an Aikido teacher at Naropa, and really both of them for the last 30 years. And um, um, this semester, I'm being TA, at, this is at Naropa, I'm being TA for uh, a man who started Aikido with me at Naropa, who's, he's teaching now. He, you know, and um, 30 years ago, yeah. we really, and yeah, I met him 25 when he was a student. And there's a, one of the young men who's taking the second level of the class uh, was having, uh, and I taught last semester, I saw he was, he came back to the class and he'd had a really rough time for, um, the last half of the class, I never quite figured out what was going on, but there was some way that I was, that I connected with him in that role. Because when I walked into class the second day, just to come to TA, I really just sit there. He came over and said hello, and he just touched his heart. And and I heard something in a conversation later about how important something I'd said mattered. And yesterday, to my surprise, right at the last minute, two women, both in their mid, late, and late 50s, called for like a quick session. You know, Jude, could I talk to you for? And I was thinking, Patty, you kind of triggered that in my mind because. I could hear the the wealth of, I have worked with them over years, but they, they were coming to me because I'm older. They were coming to me because there's part of me that has stepped into my own um, confidence, uh, like it confide, like fidelity to my own experience. I'm old now. I'm really fucking old. I don't know how much longer I'm going to live. It's, um, I'm an old lady. I don't, you know, I don't live like it, but, um, and I finally am willing to hold that confidence on and that trust in them. I know them where they forget themselves, 
and it I don't the, just those three experiences they're like almost making my mouth water it's but it's heart heart saliva it's heart liquid that I was thinking oh, it's so wonderful it's so wonderful to help that way and that intimacy doesn't need a professional um, distance. It, it just is is something, it's just a, a pathway to come into. Oh, yeah, some other woman, she just, she, she works outside the country. I met, but she came over for lunch. I forgot about her. She's, she's only in her early 40s, maybe late 30s. And this friendship that's between us is, wow. I don't know, it just felt how nourished it is to be able to help. Thank you. You know, Jude, I hear, heard something in there about claiming your age, you know? Yeah. So you're, you know, yes, you have confidence, but you're, yes, I'm old, right? So there's yeah. something about claiming your age, it seems and to me. And my authority up there. Yeah, exactly, right. And I'll just say as a younger person and knowing Jude and Tom, there's something so refreshing. I feel like they step into their elderhood in a way that it's like healthy elderhood and there's joy there and there's honesty, but there's also accountability. And I feel as in the millennial, like I'm yearning for that. I'm yearning for people who are willing to show up for me and my generation in a way that's honest and yeah. joyful and vital and so it's just, I feel what a blessing it is to be in a community like this and to actually get to share in the wisdom that you all have cultivated. And I feel like we need that. When you ask the question of spirituality, like we need to be having these conversations with each other from people who have claimed themselves in their age. Yeah, thank you. It's about love, Chloe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So I'm keeping you all way past time. So um, this is like last thoughts time. Yeah, I'll just say something real quick. Well, first I say, Judy, thank you so much for sharing that like heartfelt message. That was incredible. Definitely really touched me. And um, two things that came up for me from Angela's question and what you said is two words of really like embodiment and then inspiration where I'm really trying to just like embody like a healthy, loving, divine, masculine human being. And I know that, you know, on this journey, that this is how I can help make a change by moving towards a, a healthier, just more sustainable way I live. And then trying to inspire other people, not necessarily by saying, like, hey, look, this is what you got to do. You got to do this just by doing it and talking about my truth. And then maybe I'll inspire some other people to, you know, spark something that I'm like, wow, like maybe I can do something that can also help. So that's all that's all really I got. Like, you know, maybe I could become an influencer with like seven million followers and tell the whole world. But I don't like I don't think I don't know if that's going to that's going to happen. So if that doesn't happen. Then that's the best way I can do it. So um, and I want to say thank you, everyone, for here, for being here. Really amazing. Um, Daniel and Chloe, I'm definitely going to like reach out and connect in the future. Um, so peace, y'all. Or not peace, but anyone else. That's my, that's my piece for me. That's the last you hear from me. Thank you. <laughs> I'll just share really quick. Um, yeah. Feeling appreciative of this conversation and all the people here. Um, yeah. I, I just to go back, Angela, to your, your former question, that'll kind of tie into like bridging the generations. I haven't had any long-term mentor uh, mentors in either older or younger generations from mine over the years. Like there hasn't been any kind of like longevity in that, but I've had some deep relationships for short periods of times in people that are, you know, in older, younger generations than mine. And in those connections and relationships, I feel like, like exactly what Ian was just saying, that inspiration needed to be there. And then also listening needed to be there. And I felt like if those two things were included in those relationships and you know, there's a woman, Eloise, that I uh, spent a lot of time with in Philadelphia growing up. And it was in my formative years and we would sit down and she was in the older generation than mine. And 
I learned a ton from her and I felt like she was really, really good with listening and kind of in that conversation. So I would say that that was, that was really the kind of the key components was kind of being inspired by each other and what each generation has brought to them and the listening. And thank you. Where in Philadelphia are you from, Daniel? I grew up in Ambler. Uh, I'm from Germantown. Oh, as, okay. As, as a Zan. Oh, amazing. <laughs> okay, yeah. any, any other last thoughts? I Yeah, I just want to close by just saying, you know, I've I've been fortunate to, to over the years to be with multi generational groups most of my adult life, and you know I was inspired by my grandparents to, you know, open those kind of conversations. So, you know, I'm I'm leaving both inspired but also um, a little sad because right now in my life I'm I'm kind of doing other work. And um, I'm working with people that are in dying processes. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I, I just feel like I'm really I'm missing, um, you know, this these groups of people that I used to hang out with a lot. And um, so anyway, I'm inspired. I'm inspired to reach out to uh, some younger people that I've, you know, that have just kind of drifted back <laughs> away from. Um, and, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, <laughs> yeah, creating some kind of events this year that'll, that'll get, you know, multi-generations together. So thanks for the inspiration, Angelo. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, Tom, you can't go yet because I remember on the agenda, you're supposed to give us a blessing. Okay. Go out. Okay. I can do that. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So let's um, come back to our breath. <sighs> and maybe just close your eyes and go inside a minute. <sighs> and just open your heart. Just come down into your heart. If you're not already there, I'm assuming actually most of us are just in this more heartful space. And imagining yourself um, with a circle of beings around you, both older and younger. You might actually see individual faces, but it might also just be kind of this, you know, on one in front of you are younger people and behind you are elders and olders. And just feeling that flow of love and connection that comes from the past down through those older generations through you and to through you into younger generations and and just feeling this connection to this beautiful earth and all the beings that we share this earth with with and how we're all connected in this deeply important transitional time right now of moving toward you know this more beautiful world that we can all imagine in our hearts and seeing us stepping out in our own particular unique soulful you know unique genius ways of bringing those visions into reality um on this plane and thank you all for being here this morning and and sharing your your beauty and your your wisdom blessed be blessed be thank you so much <laughs>